Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. I wanted to take a quick step further into Krita, specifically with the animation workspace. I got the question, can you do vector animation with Krita, the animation module? And interestingly, the answer is both yes and no. Let's explore what it can do for you right now. So once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for joining in. If this is your first time watching this kind of video, I do a lot of work on this channel to build a community of learning to surface the cheap or free art technologies that you can know about them and make use of them. I'll give a quick shout out to Creator Toolbox, which is at photolearningism.com. It is a free searching tool that I've been working on to enable you to search through different kinds of tools by just searching by video or photo and you can find the kind of tool you're looking for, see the review and try it out if you like. Um, there's, again, it's a free, no obligation. Try it out and see if it's useful for you and um, see if it helps you find uh, the tools that you're after. So again, jumping back to what we're covering today, I'm going to look at Krita and specifically centered around the concept of vectors um, because this is interesting. Um, we give a demonstration and I'll put a card up in the corner. Uh, the last time we looked at inserting reference video by, by using an image sequence and you can draw on top of that and uh, I thought that was really kind of cool because you could draw and animate with traditional style animation using real life uh, video in that case translating it into image sequence so let's go check that out but working with vectors it's an interesting prospect because you could have control over a mathematical object that could be manipulated potentially sadly you can't keyframe with it though in a traditional sense in the Krita module as it stands right now. And this is version 4.4.0. I know 4.4.1 just came out, but I don't know if they fixed it with that or considered it for that release. So I'll show you what it can do. And um, that way you can maybe save some time figuring this out on your own. So I'm gonna flip off my view of things so you can see better. And away we go. So I've added a couple different vector layers. I've been playing with this for a bit. I will start by adding in a brand new vector layer uh, on top and just to kind of step you through what's already here uh, these are a couple of frames of a fire that I, I had in my backyard and I'm using it right now as an image sequence I loaded them in prior to starting this video uh, it's a few frames of a fire burning so that's kind of as a layer that I can work on top of all right now I'm adding a vector and I want to add a shape on top of that and we can use really any of these shape-based tools here to do that. Um, I'm just gonna work with a typical polyline, polyline tool <laughs> and do a quick add to this. And by the way, if you're gonna work on the sizing and opacity, do that first, because uh, you can't change it after the fact, or at least not that I could find. So do that first. I'm just gonna pop this on here and do that. And if I wanted to, then I could go into here, into this Edit Shape tool, and I could manipulate this. Now, this would be so cool. It would be so awesome if there was a way, again, to keyframe this on the animation timeline. I cannot find a way to do that. Um, so what you can do is you can take this shape and you can add opacity keyframes which could have some interesting minor effect use. Like if you want to have an object that is stationary, again, you can't even keyframe motion in this. Um, but if there's a stationary object, you have the ability to take this object that could be manipulated and it will stay that way, by the way. So if I change it there, that's what it is. Or if I change it here, <laughs> that's what it will be for all frames. It is a singular entity that cannot be changed into individual keyframes in this case, unfortunately. So understanding that, what you can do is starting here at the beginning, I'm going to add under tweening an opacity keyframe. What I can do with that is I could drag this out as I want to as a rough example, just to show you what that does. You can see this built this transition now, where now, that has 
some animated frames from zero opacity all the way up to 100. And I could make this a little different in that I could step this a different way. Like if I wanted to add another frame here, another opacity keyframe, and in this particular case, the, the controls are driven over here. So maybe I wanna have it pop up, and then for the last one, I want this to drop all the way back to zero. Okay, that's how it works for the opacity keyframe. And if I were to play this on repeat, you can see what that's doing. And I can make it a little clearer if I just take away my reference layers here. Let me see if I can pull this up. And let's try that. So you can see how that drops in and drops out. So as a stationary object, that does have some potential. Uh, if you were going to have a stationary shot like I'm doing, where it's just a fire pit that doesn't move, you could sort of simulate a pseudo type of flame like this or something that has uh, some transparent properties. Uh, the kind of the catch and the caveat here is that it has to be stationary. <laughs> it cannot move. You can maintain control over those points if you you know want to manipulate this as you go along and maybe make it fit better uh, as a stationary object. But that's unfortunately really the whole show. I played with this over multiple nights, um, doing research, doing searching, digging through the manual. There's nothing in the manual about uh, vectors as it pertains to animation. There's a whole lot out there about drawing vector objects, which is cool, but as it pertains to animation, I couldn't find a thing. So hopefully this saves you some time if you're curious about it and kind of shows you what it can do. There's not much. And uh, credit team, if you happen to catch this video, I would submit to you this is an opportunity uh, for development because this would just be so amazing if there were keyframing opportunities, options here uh, for these points, if, you, if, if that could be added in because that just that that would be an incredible enhancement to the animation module and i know it's designed around the traditional approach and and using vector completely de yeah <laughs> completely steps outside of that but this is another area where krita could expand uh, its feature and tool set uh to to enter into a new area of artistic creation so i submit that as an as an idea so I hope that's helpful. Hope it saves you some time and gives you a picture of what Krita can do. Again, go watch the video on how to do the reference video I'm importing as a sequence, and it shows a little bit more of the lay of the land of how to access and use the animation interface and how to get to that workspace. So go watch that because uh, I know I kind of jump straight into it here. Uh, again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. If this was helpful to you, please give me a thumbs up so I know uh, that this content was helpful for you, that it spoke to you directly. Uh, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the other awesome content that we're going to get to in the future. And also join the conversation. Leave a comment. I really love it when people jump into this community and become involved and ask questions. And not just for me, but for the entire community so that we can grow stronger, learn about new settings, better ways of doing things, uh, and even better ways than I'm showing because I'm sure that there are elegant things that remain undiscovered and we are stronger together, right? So there's power in people. Thank you so much for watching and spending these few minutes with me. Take care.